In our video on color in movies, we took a look at some of the ways in which color is used to make sure the audience feels the way the story intends it to. But what happens when a movie does something unexpected? To illustrate this, we will take a closer look at one movie that deviates from the norm. Midsommar, a Technicolor horror film. We are used to horror films being set in the dark, but with Midsommar it is quite the opposite. Let's take a look at how the film manages to make us feel uncomfortable, despite having a color palette that on its own might make us think we've been placed inside of a joyful dream. The upcoming part will include spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, please make sure you do that first. Midsommar follows a disintegrating couple, Danny and Christian. Christian wants out of the relationship, but as he's about to break up with Danny, something tragic happens to her. Christian, who now feels bad about dumping her, invites her to travel to Sweden to visit the character Pelle's rural hometown, Horga, and participate in its fabled once every 90 years midsummer festival. But what is supposed to be an idyllic retreat quickly escalates into an increasingly violent and truly bizarre pagan ritual. Midsommar is Ari Aster's second movie and a follow-up of his folk horror film Hereditary. In Hereditary, Ari Aster and his cinematographer Pavel Pogorzelski exploited the dark. They explore just how dark dark could get. In Midsommar, however, they have flipped a full 180. Midsommar is a vibrant breakup film set in the land of the midnight sun. Bright daylight, vibrant yellows and greens, nature and captivating whites blasting at you everywhere you look. While the story in itself uses several techniques to play upon what frightens us, the Horga commune's way of life alludes to our fear of ritual. In our modern secular age, we have come to grow weary of the spaces in which ritual exists. In everything from the Horga's synchronized eating habits, the way in which they pick the flowers while walking backwards, or how they toast before they drink, to the collective way in which they experience pain, you can tell that there is a certain way in which things should be done and the entire group seems to act like one single unit. The film plays upon this fear of ritual, but also showcases how ritual can benefit us, giving us a sense of purpose, comfort, and community, as well as tools for how to deal with life. Like Pelle says when he's speaking to Danny about the loss of her parents. He lost his parents too, but never once did he feel as if he wasn't loved or held. The film also uses symbolism to foreshadow what's to come. The paintings on the walls around them constantly tell us what will happen to our protagonists. Aster allows this to be part of the story the same way his violence is. It is bright, clear, and out in the open. Despite knowing what will happen, we as viewers can't seem to look away. Now let's take a look at how the color showcased in the movie manages to creep us out despite not being dark. In Midsommar, the shots are overexposed, sunlight is constantly poking through as if you're walking around with the sun in your eyes, unable to see clearly. The lens flares help perpetuate what we already know, that the characters can't see clearly what will happen to them. The colors are desaturated, contributing to the film's dreamlike state. Everything from the upside-down shot as they enter Horga to the hallucinogenic drugs blends masterfully with the overexposed, desaturated technicolor theme throughout the movie, making us in turn feel as if we've lost hold of reality. And with dreams, you're always left to wonder, could this be a nightmare? As pointed out by Bertie Gaither in an article in Story Screen, the colors yellow and blue in Misoma can be seen to signify youth versus age. The Horga elders are wearing blue robes as they are sacrificed in a ritualistic manner, something which can be connected to the beginning of the movie, where Danny's parents both die wearing blue. However, Danny's sister, who also passes away, is dressed in yellow. Yellow here comes to represent the youth that must be sacrificed. You can see this in the yellow sacrificial building where a select group of Horga's lives end prematurely, as well as the yellow flowers picked by Danny and then handed to Christian, a foreshadowing of what might come later on. With Aster introducing these colors at the beginning of the film, we come to understand what they represent and feel uneasy about their existence. Similarly, white holds a specific meaning to the story as well. In a Truth Dig article written by Noor al sebai she states that, From the dizzying and near perpetual sunlight to the clothes worn by the Horga, whiteness symbolizes the unity of the cult. Color on the clothes of the outsiders, and especially on the skin of Josh and British visitors Connie and Simon, is an instant visual cue of otherness. Aster uses the color white to show us the alienation and otherness of our main characters. This becomes especially apparent when Danny is crowned the May Queen, Christian being the only person in these shots dressed in darker clothing. His alienation, alongside his bad trip, instills an uneasy feeling in us. We know he doesn't belong to the group and we're anxious to see what will happen to him. 
And as mentioned earlier, Aster's violence is played out right before our eyes, allowing us to take in the full extent of the blood, the flesh, and the gore. The bright color scheme ensures that there is nothing for us to hide behind as we encounter the Horga people's violence. With this, Ariaster shows us that horror doesn't have to take place in hidden spaces covered in darkness. Sometimes the most horrific acts can be performed right before your eyes. Don't forget to tune in next time when we will do a deep analysis of audio in motion pictures. I'll see you then.